dominated both the Pacific and European combat theaters. But surprisingly, this was not the case in the beginning stages of the war. Early American fighters could not always match the speed and maneuverability of the enemy aircraft that they were facing. To help find a way to improve the aircraft American pilots were flying, U.S. military planners turned to NASA's predecessor, NACA, which they hoped could find a way to help the United States gain air superiority over World War II's battlefields. On the eve of World War II, with the prospect of war looming in the United States, military planners began an exhaustive look at the preparedness and equipment that it would use to fight a war. One area where the United States had fallen noticeably behind to its future enemies was in aircraft. Many of the aircraft that U.S. pilots were flying were much slower and less maneuverable than the aircraft that they would soon be facing in combat. With this knowledge in hand, a concerted effort was made by the U.S. government to find ways to quickly improve the American aircraft situation. Since NASA's predecessor, NACA, or the National Advisory Committee for Aeronautics, was the preeminent aeronautics lab in the country, a large part of this examination fell to them. NACA researchers knew that they could improve an aircraft's performance by simply reducing the amount of drag the aircraft experienced. This was called drag cleanup. The Navy's XF-2A Brewster Buffalo was the first of many military aircraft tested by NACA in an effort to improve performance. Researchers at the NACA Langley Research Center took only five days to determine several key areas in which the Buffalo could be improved. To the untrained eye, the Buffalo appeared aerodynamically clean. However, the wind tunnel information showed a very different picture. Many parts, like the gun sights, the engine cowling, and landing gear on the Buffalo protruded into the slipstream, causing increased drag, which slowed the aircraft tremendously. The researchers at NACA modified these problem areas, which increased the Buffalo's speed by an impressive 10%. Such a performance improvement without raising engine power or reducing fuel efficiency immediately caught the eye of many aircraft designers. Extra speed for a fighter plane, even as little as 15 miles per hour, could determine who won or lost in an aerial dogfight. When Langley researchers streamlined the U.S. Navy's F-4F Wildcat, it was able to fly a full 45 miles per hour faster. The F-4F successor, the F-6F Hellcat, was also streamlined making it faster and more maneuverable, able to reach a maximum speed of 375 miles per hour. This extra speed proved valuable in combat, allowing Hellcat pilots to destroy nearly 5,000 enemy planes in aerial engagements. NACA Langley proved a key stopping point for dozens of aircraft on their way to combat duty in World War II. During one month alone in July 1944, 36 U.S. Army and Navy planes were evaluated in detailed studies of stability, control, and performance. NACA Langley tested 137 different airplane types between 1941 and 1945, either in wind tunnels or in flight. While NACA's pioneering drag cleanup work helped save the lives of many American pilots during World War II, it also shortened the war considerably and saved the lives of countless others around the world. During the World War II era, NACA researchers also worked on a series of wing designs called the Low Drag Series. These wing designs were so successful in improving aircraft performance that they are still being used by airplane designers today. Coming up, we find out how new satellites may help scientists better understand the Earth's atmosphere. But first, did you know that Charles Lindbergh shot down a Japanese fighter in World War II? Although Lindbergh was not in the military, he was secretly asked to teach American pilots how to increase the range of their P-38 Lightnings. During a training mission on July 28, 1944, Lindbergh encountered a Japanese Sonya aircraft. As the Sonya turned to attack, Lindbergh fired a short burst, sending the Sonya down in flames. Understanding the Earth's atmosphere can be very difficult. A mixture of global weather patterns, greenhouse gases, and airborne particles can make the overall picture for scientists very confusing. To help provide a better picture of how all of these variables affect the Earth's atmosphere, NASA researchers are developing new atmospheric satellite systems. These new systems will not only work to provide a better understanding of the Earth's atmosphere, but will lead to better prediction models. Stephanie Nevin finds out more. In recent years, researchers have seen an alarming warming trend in the global climate. Reports of increasing temperatures, thinning glaciers, and rising sea levels 